Are you tired of losing money trading cryptocurrencies? Sign up for my free trading AI with over 50% monthly return on your investment. Link is in the description. Are lost employment and investments a real and quantifiable result of the regulatory gridlock in the US? What distinguishes MENA from US crypto legislation, by the way? Additionally, it already uses the RippleNet technology to support its cross-border payment solutions as a Ripple Core Pay partner. Bill Morgan has also backed Ripple's decision to keep XRP out of its liquidity center. As Empower Oversight sues the SEC for transparency, we'll also be looking at the most recent developments. Finally, the price of XRP is declining along with the rest of the cryptocurrency market. But the question of how low XRP can fall still stands. Follow me through to the end to learn more. Experts claim that because there are no regulations or standards for the digital asset market in the United States, important economic possibilities and innovation must move to countries with established legal systems, like the UAE and Europe. The policy head at Ripple Blockchain, Susan Friedman, has voiced her concerns on the exodus of players in the cryptocurrency business to Europe as a result of the absence of clear regulatory rules in the United States. The sector is already seeing a flow of talent to Europe, where the rules of the road are clear thanks to the recently enacted MICA legislation. Therefore, Friedman claims that concerns about innovation moving overseas are overstated. MICA, or Markets and Crypto Assets Regulation, is noteworthy. It is a proposed collection of rules intended to establish a unified regulatory environment for digital assets within the European Union. The regulation was introduced by the European Commission in September 2020, and it is planned to go into effect in 2024. The lack of regulatory certainty in the US is a significant source of concern for the cryptocurrency business, which is why Friedman made his remarks. The lack of a complete structure for the business from US regulatory bodies, despite repeated requests for clear norms, has caused many players to look for opportunities abroad. The Ripple policy chief added that the US's regulatory gridlock has a discernible effect on the nation in terms of lost jobs and investments. Many cryptocurrency businesses have chosen to establish marketplaces in the US and Europe. Loses a sizable portion of the industry's growth potential despite the lack of specific regulations. One of the most important regulatory bodies in the United States, the Securities and Exchange Commission SEC, has cracked down on a number of cryptocurrency companies, including Ripple, Blockchain, Coinbase, Crypto Exchange, and Paxos, the company that produces the BUSD stablecoin. Republicans on the House Financial Services Committee FSC, released a statement yesterday criticizing the SEC's enforcement and supervision of digital assets. While voicing disapproval of the SEC's regulatory strategy, the FSC noted that enforcement-based regulation is driving innovation in the digital asset ecosystem abroad and jeopardizing American competitiveness. As was mentioned in a previous interview, Monica Long, the president of Ripple, questioned the US's enforcement-based approach to regulating. Highlighting the superior regulatory environment in Europe, she expressed optimism about a successful resolution in the SEC litigation in Ripple's favor despite the existence of numerous sovereign states. Please remember to hit the notification bell and subscribe to our channel so you can be the first to learn about new developments. Regarding XRP, Managing Director Mina, Ripple, South Asia, and Naveen Gupta, I recently discussed the business's choice to increase its presence in Dubai. In the center of the Dubai International Financial Center, Ripple has built a new regional office, as was previously reported. Members of the cryptocurrency community have reacted to the news, suggesting that Ripple may be preparing to leave the US. Gupta was asked to contrast the crypto regulatory climate in MENA with that in the US in a recent Coindesk TV interview. If you had to compare the Middle East's regulatory climate for cryptocurrencies to that of the US, how would you describe it? Present time? A Coindesk reporter questioned Gupta. Gupta stated in response to the query that day and night, the crypto environments in both MENA and the US are comparable. Gupta said, I mean, it's like day and night. The Ripple CEO claims that UE regulators are friendlier and more approachable which makes it simpler for crypto-related businesses to engage in meaningful conversation with them. According to Gupta, 
you may come up with a concept, discuss it with the regulator, decide on a course of action, and proceed very quickly. Gupta claims that because of the accommodating regulations in the UAE, businesses can easily mobilize teams. Companies can also expand continuously, go back to the authorities, and ask for explanations, especially when the model changes. In comparison to the US, he continued, financial regulators in the UAE are paving the way for businesses to expand in the Web3 sector. So, according to Gupta, this is a positive two-way conversation that is paving the road for businesses to flourish in the Web3 industry. Along with Gupta, several important stakeholders have commended UE officials for fostering a favorable business environment for cryptocurrencies. Brian Armstrong, co-founder and CEO of the San Francisco-based exchange Coinbase, stated earlier this week that the UE regulators should be commended for their progressive approach to cryptocurrencies. Armstrong outlined some of the achievements made by UE regulators, such as the release of a detailed rulebook, robust customer protection, and an atmosphere that is conducive to business. Additionally, Corpe, a well-known Ripple partner and business payments provider operating under the Fleeker name, recently disclosed that its cross-border division has partnered with American commercial bank Sunflower Bank. The partnership was just announced in a news release. Customers of Sunflower Bank will have access to Corpay's cutting-edge solutions for international payments and the reduction of foreign exchange risk thanks to this agreement, particularly those in the Southwest and Mountain West areas. Clients of Sunflower Bank can easily handle their international transactions from a centralized access point by utilizing Corpay's renowned trading platform. Due to Corpay's FX risk management capabilities, this will be especially helpful for institutional clients with regular payment requirements. To improve its cross-border services, Corpay, formerly known as Cambridge Global Payments, signed a partnership agreement with Ripple as early as October 2020. However, Bill Morgan, a pro-XRP attorney and enthusiast for digital assets, took to Twitter to respond to a recent discussion between Paul Growall, the chief legal officer of Coinbase, and John Deaton, an attorney and founder of Crypto Law. The section of the conversation that caught Bill Morgan's attention was when Paul Grohl revealed that 20% of Coinbase's revenue comes from its international operations. According to the company's most recent quarterly report, 54% of their transaction income is dependent on Bitcoin and Ethereum. According to Bill Morgan's interpretation of Coinbase's most recent quarterly report, U.S. Ethereum trading is crucial to Coinbase's operations and any attempt by the company to ban trading in Bitcoin and Ethereum will be difficult for the exchange. In comparing Coinbase to Ripple, Bill Morgan claimed that 90% of Ripple businesses are located outside of the United States. The company's revenue comes from Ripple's sales of XRP to ODL users. Bill Morgan agrees that XRP should not have been included in the Ripple liquidity hub since doing so will enable Ripple to expand its US clientele and rely less on XRP sales, which will encourage the company to diversify. Stuart Alderity, the chief legal officer of Ripple, explained why the business had omitted XRP from the liquidity hub, claiming that enterprise customers value regulatory clarity for XRP in the US. Alderity added that liquidity hub is aimed for businesses rather than regular customers and calls for a lot of liquidity. Due of the US's insufficient liquidity for XRP, as long as they can provide a positive consumer experience, they want to support it. In addition to XRP, Alderity pointed out that Liquidity Hub is made to obtain liquidity from other crypto assets. In a recent step in the continuing legal conflict between the United States Securities and Exchange Commission and Ripple Labs, renowned cryptocurrency attorney Johnny Deaton accused the SEC of obstructionism and lying about the situation. Deaton vented his anger at the SEC on Twitter while acting as the attorney for a group of XRP investors in the legal dispute. He claimed that the SEC's executive branch is dishonest and opaque in its dealings with Ripple Labs. Deaton claims that the SEC has been withholding vital records and correspondence that Ripple Labs needs to make a compelling defense in the protracted legal dispute. Notably, the lawyer made these claims in response to a recent U.S. action. Empower Oversight is a whistleblower and anti-corruption watchdog. 
a nonprofit organization named Power Oversight filed a new complaint against the SEC in a U.S. federal court on May 11 in an effort to force the regulator to accede to a previous FOIA request the group had made. Empower Oversight stated in the most recent complaint that it had sent a thorough FOIA request to the SEC in August 2021, asking for all correspondence concerning cryptocurrencies between senior SEC employees and their previous companies and affiliated entities. The organization claims that the request was made after it was learned that William Henman, a former top SEC official, received $9 million in pay from Simpson Thatcher, his previous company. Even as assisting in directing SEC enforcement actions with cryptocurrencies. Notably, Thatcher was a member of a group that supported Ethereum, a cryptocurrency with a proof of state that the former chairman of the SEC publicly proclaimed was not a security. However, the SEC's current leadership has classified XRP as a security, which has led to drawn out legal battles. How low can XRP fall is the major question of the day right now. Please remember to hit the notification bell and subscribe to our channel so you can be the first to learn about new developments involving XRP. Although the situation has taken a bearish turn, Ygreg is still bullish on XRP in the long run and believes that the potential bull run is still intact. XRP recently slipped into a descending channel formation and is currently caught in a bearish storm. Ygreg, a well-known cryptocurrency expert who originally noticed the trend, believes that XRP might plunge to the 31 cents lows from January or rocket to a 55 cents high. The XRP declining channel started to form in late March following its most recent solo climb, according to an XRP daily chart posted by Egress. As was previously mentioned, XRP held a significant surge on March 21. During the run, XRP jumped more than 56% in just 8 days reaching a high of 58 cents on March 29. After hitting a high of 58 cents, XRP ran into resistance and began to decrease sporadically, which resulted in the development of the current downward channel. When an asset's price continually declines between two parallel trend lines that slope downward, a pattern known as a descending channel is created on the chart. In contrast to the lower trend line, which connects price lows, the upper trend line connects price highs. The downward sloping trend lines and descending channel of XRP are indicative of a long-term trend of lower highs and lower lows, which is regarded as bearish for the asset. The fact that the price is falling with each new high may indicate that sellers are in control of the market. Even though the channel formation is a negative signal, Ygreg asserts that XRP may yet break out to the upside or fall. If XRP makes an upward breakout, it may retake the 55 cents mark, which it last reached on March 30th. On the other hand, if the breakout occurs to the downside, the price might fall by 25%. On January 2nd, XRP prices fell to their lowest level ever. Ygreg underlined that the current bearish trend, which is simply a short-term condition, does not invalidate the possibility of a long-term rebound for XRP. Ygreg estimated that XRP would reach $10 or $27 by 2025 based on the asset's current position, as was previously mentioned last week. The price of XRP is currently $0.42, cents, down 9.77% from the previous week. XRP has been impacted by the recent market slump, but in the last two days, the asset has avoided suffering substantial intraday losses and has even posted tiny gains. We have now reached the conclusion of this movie. If you found it enjoyable, kindly click the like button. Don't forget to click the notification bell and subscribe. I find that the YouTube algorithm is greatly aided by this. Sharing this video with as many people as you can will also help enlighten others in the same way that you have been enlightened. Let's spread the word about this, guys. Don't miss any of our stuff if you are a serious Bitcoin enthusiast. We'll chat about the most recent news that affects our community as a whole when we meet you tomorrow.